the hardcore life in Diablo 4, my friends. It has not been good for me so far. The one-shot death is a giant, giant pain in the rear. And I ain't kidding you, fellers and fellettes. Um, it's been a problem. Let me tell you. Uh, so what we're gonna try, this is Steve Rogers 10.0, because, uh, I killed the other nine. It's not good. I'll just say that. It has not been, it has not been, uh, it has not been smooth sailing so far. In the, uh, in the, uh, old hardcore world here. In fact, it's been a, uh, it's been tough and rough. So Rogers, we got him back up to 26. We have yet to beat the campaign because I died. It's a problem. And you know, here we go. Season one is gonna start soon. I still haven't beat the damn campaign. All right. So my plan, tentatively, is you gotta have plans. My plan, I had a plan, is I'm at least gonna level this guy to 35. If I get him to 35, then I'll fly through the campaign. Right now, campaign-wise, uh, we're in Act 2, we finished Act 1, we haven't started 3. I've beaten Act 4, 5-ish, somewhere in there, ish. So I've got a mount and a horsey. Yeah, got that. The way, the way I'm leveling, there's a couple of dungeons that are pretty pretty sweet to run. This one, Champion's Demise. Another between Champion's Demise and another dungeon further up. So that's the strategy. Get us to 35-ish. And then, then we'll go back of the uh, campaign quest, which are pretty cool to see the cutscenes, but when you've died ten times, um, you know, here's my fallen characters, you can only keep eight. So I've had up to 49 and uh, died. By the way, the Mother's Judgment, FYI, uh, stand away from her. She hurts. I mean, it, it, it's painful. Anywho's. They had some neat features in Diablo 4. some kind of stone or something. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback there, uh, Valor. So you go to sound there. Turn the music off. Well, maybe I'll turn the music off. Save changes, sure. There you go. That way the game sounds are <laughs> the viewership. Gotta be set. I had it set up you know, for me. Here I Some stuff. The legendary is more the little. You can find 
fight them on the rock, once you get them, you can burn them on. Carry that. Imprint that you get in dungeons have lower rolls. Level. stone thing so you put it on your guy's back and then you take it to something and that opens the pathway to a boss all right so we got a level up point we'll put it into good or roll yell our shouts will cause the enemies next to us to do less damage which is anything we can do in the old hardcore world to get less damage to you um, probably You don't have to spend a lot of time just killing every last one of them. You get more XP from packs, just like almost every version of Diablo. Back to Diablo 2, it's the elites from Diablo 2 that you got more XP from. Diablo 3, same deal, you go pack to pack. All the trash, if there's a pile of them, my kill friends them. Were cut down. You don't. <laughs> Steak for dinner. Feeling, feeling good. Fear of the month, boss. And follow that up with the Pepsi Max Chaser. stones on these pedestals. I ran to the second one and forgot to drop one off. Oops. One stone back in there. Pop up. Here's another change that initially when I started playing D4, I wasn't a fan of. So if you remember back to Diablo 2, you could fill your inventory with just tons and tons and tons of potions. You know, especially like a new character. You pop to a vendor and you just fill your, your backpack and belt with 
with uh, potions and then just run out and kill stuff and pop potions as you need, reload, what have you. So the potions are here and as you get renown, which is like uh, reputation within the area in which you're uh, leveling in, you can move up uh, in renown, which will give you rewards, including extra potions. So you started off, I, I believe, with four or five potions. It was like, man, that's not enough. And then as your renown goes up, your potion count goes up as well. I'm up to nine, which is fair. I mean, that's like a, if you remember back to the Diablo 2 days, that would be like a large belt. But they're still nice to have these extra functions, especially in the level. The other issue, which I like and kind of don't like. that you'll walk into as a level, let's say, or 27 level irrelevant. So you're never going to level in an area. They're always going to be around your level. We start this dungeon at 27 and we level up to 28. All the monsters in the dungeon are 27. Um, like a 35 zone and you're a 10, you're going to get slaughtered. Never going to be able to do a Diablo 2 where you would go to a zone, lower monsters, and, you know, maybe farm them up. Which is probably not a great experience for us anyway. I like, and yeah, don't like, I guess. And I assume at some high level you're going to have. I haven't got there yet, because I keep dying. And my death is stupid. They're all like things. One shot down. And uh, there's not a uh, a stat, uh, a uh, statistic page you can look at and say, oh, you were hit with 1,000 bleed damage or something. So you never know what the heck you do, other than, you know, it says Mother's Judgment killed you. Okay. Thanks, Mother's Judgment. That was pleasant. All right, we got the third stone. We stick this in this pedestal, and it summons these two. Khalid took the last of the world. Summons the opening to the boss. Pop down in here, and this is the boss of this dungeon. And then the dungeon is reset like every 10 to 15 minutes. So finish this.
one boss done. So then I'll pull up the map, go out to the world map, the world map out here. It's almost like an MMO in this aspect. Hey, what's up, Poppin? And we'll go to this town, pop in here, and we'll teleport over to my next dungeon that I've been playing at. That I can't remember the name of, because as my boys just told me, I'm old. So, all right, quick double check of the gear. Damage reduction, healing received. See, that might be better than the one I'm wearing. Might switch to that and then re-imprint that with something else. All right, damage. Total armor, damage reduction, damage. Oh, that's that is better. All right, so we're gonna have to make some changes to gear here. And I'm looking for certain stats on each of these items. I like this, crit damage, basic. No. 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 Vulnerable. No. It's got to be a faster way to check gear for upgrades, but I don't know what other than reading all of it. Crit, vulnerable, all stats, no. It's a basic skill I don't need. Crit, lucky, physical time, no. Alright, so let's go and print these two pieces of gear real quick, so we're actually going to leave here the main town that has an printer. And we'll imprint the same aspect on here and then drop the legendaries off at the bank. Just in case I have to go to Steve Rogers 11.0. I mean, that won't ever happen, but, you know. Let's plan for it. Save the gear that you don't need, right? So you go over here to this enchanter pretty similar to what you had in Diablo 3 I guess they call her an occultist all right so I want to put uh, this codex of power my class only I put on this one this is the pants right yeah I put on the pants I don't remember what I put on the pants I put this one, the bleeding one. That's fine. Ah, That's the exact one I want, but that fine. Is... The chest, I will put aspect of the protector. Yeah. There we go. So I get a barrier, a little bit of damage reduction for bleeding enemies, and everyone's going to be bleeding. All right, we should be good here. So, as far as my, since we're already in the gear here, so you can kind of see, I've imprinted most of this stuff. So the helm, um, gain armor, uh, when you do. Which is uh, pretty useful. And my headset just shut off, that's annoying. Put this to headset. There we go. Uh, the chest I have, Damage in an elite gives you a barrier that uh, absorbs some damage. And you can see the roll on that damage could be from 315 to 630. When you imprint it, the imprinting gives you like the lowest roll. So if you found this in the world, it might you might find a better op a better version of it. Um, you know, this is what we got. Uh, core skills have a 22% chance to extend berserking. Again, lowest roll because it's an imprint. Uh, gain 2% damage reduction for bleeding enemies. Up to 10% damage reduction. That's great. Critical strike. Uh, chance is increased by 6% for each second since channeled up to 18. So more crits. Good. Skills. Uh, 
increased damage uh, based on the primary resource when you cast it. So if you're at full resource and you cast your Whirlwind, you're going to get 10% damage. That's great. Whenever you deal direct damage when Berserking, you inflict 20% of that damage as additional bleeding damage. So we're doing a lot of bleeds. This is not what I planned for, but hey, Call of the Ancients. Uh, it's on my bar. I'm using it. And then they'll do exactly the same thing I'm doing. Whirlwind or Leap. Um, you restore some primary resource when you crowd control an enemy, which interestingly, bleed and will... Uh, all the bleeds on my barbarian will cause slow because of a skill, which I'll show you. Um, so that's helpful. Shouts generate fury. That's helpful. And uh, this is just a, a default one that came from leveling the game. So as far as our abilities, if you go in here, the ability tree, hamstring. Your bleeding effects will cause slow, which is a crown control. So there comes that extra damage we are just talking about. All right. Uh, I gotta put a point to unconstrained next. All right, so let's sell the rest of this, or uh, let's salvage the rest of this items that we don't need. Head in here, get rid of these you can take things, what's left. and we'll throw the gems back in the old bank. I just go to the wrong spot. I yep, I did. We don't want to go here. I'm going to go to the next dungeon, which is up here. That town. All five. All right. Hey, that guy's in the Pepsi Guild. How do you get in that guild? Alright, we'll take a horse. And we'll go for a quick run here. And right here. Let's pass these guys. Alright. Hey, there's a bush. Why not? Ah, uh, it's Mercy's Reach. This is the other dungeon I've been running. So we'll go back and forth between this and uh, the uh, Champion's Demise, I think was the name of the other dungeon, Champion's Demise. Those are the two I've been running back and forth between. 27 at the start of this, and we'll see how far we get. killing a lot of elites, at least in theory, you should get more gear. And, you know, like all the action role-playing games, the gear is really what tends to advance your character and provide more safety and longevity. The other thing that's nice in Diablo 4 is you roll up on an uh, elite pack, you can see like a little emblem below him, like that Quillbore had a little fire emblem below him. Where in Diablo 2, even Diablo 3, a lot of times it was harder to identify which pack was an elite pack. Maybe not as much as in Diablo 3. They kind of 
but you could kind of tell just based on the coloration of the attack. But Diablo 2, definitely, I would come up to these quill boards and I'd mouse over them to say, is that an elite pack? Is that not an elite pack? Do I want to waste my time with these guys? Um, so they, seeing that, like I can, I can see right away, oh, that's, that's an elite pack, that is an elite pack. I, I can keep going, I, uh, I'm doing right, I'm not doing right, etc. So I, I think that is, that's a, that's a solid improvement. And it's a subtle thing, but sometimes when you had a game that was really good, and I'd still say Diablo 2 is my better version, of my personal favorite of the Diablo series. Uh, it was already a really good game, so little improvements are really all you have to make. You don't have to make ginormous improvements, because the game was already really awesome. Advance it, advance the graphics, make some new mechanics. Move the story forward, which they obviously did in this version. This is interesting, because it's a little... We clicked on that chest, and it triggered this mini event which gives us more XP, more monsters to kill. Always fun to kill more monsters. And we level. Which is good. 28 now. And we pop the chest. There we go. Let's see, we're gonna put our next point into unconstrained. Partially because I don't have a way to keep my fury up. There is a uh, probably a better unbridled rage, which would increase the cost of my whirlwind by a ton. I just don't have a way to get my rage uh, high enough to benefit from that at this point. All right, so here's the two pedestals. So we'll go down two different hallways, find some item. Bring it back to that pedestal, which will open a door to another area, which leads to the eventual boss of this dungeon. And then you rinse and repeat, go back to the next dungeon. And then, like I said, there's... Uh, it's an open world map, which is unique to the Diablo series. Uh, uh, there was not open world maps in Diablo 3 or 4, it was instance versions, so you'd load a game and you'd have your axe, but it definitely wasn't open world like this. Which I think is kind of neat. Um, anyway. But there's hundreds of these mini little dungeons across the open world map, and they all are the same in the principle of kill some monsters, get something, maybe have a little event along the way in chess, take those things to some pedestals, open up, open up the the door to the boss, kill the boss, and you beat that dungeon. And each dungeon has rewards of some of those aspects that, that we imprinted on our yellow gear to make our weak legendary items. So, really neat mechanic. Uh, pretty, pretty smart how they did that, honestly. So there's still some excitement about getting legendaries, but you're also not just waiting for legendaries to make a version of your build that will work and be fairly effective. Because you can just imprint them and make your own legendaries. You get it, right, boys? Hey, you get what I'm saying, right, boys? Ah, oh, there you go. And you can play in the super zoomed up mode too, which is pretty cool. My barbarian has been eating his Wheaties. I can say that, he's a big dude. Must have been going to the gym with my, my boy Luke. Legendary item. See how he's got a little fireball under his head. He 
know that the legendary one, that one's got like some kind of emblem under it. Try to stay on the legendary, that one's got a frost one, so he's cold. And again, these are the guys who give more XP and generally better item drops. So those are the ones you want to try to target. A little trash guy like that, I don't need to go back to kill him. It's just not worth the time to sit there and smack him a few times. So we put the things on the pedestal. This dungeon has a little, like, jail along the way. And it seems like about one out of every three times I've come down here, there's a little event in this area along the way. So I kind of run around to try to see if there's a small event. Kill a little of the trash on the way. Not wasting too much time. Just more just eyeballing to see if there's an event. And if there is, we do the event. If not, uh, that health well is the entrance to the boss. We're just popping over here. Okay, here we go. Something about over here. Or later. Right, so no event in this one, but we had another at least we had another elite monster. So let's go ahead and head into the boss here, which is kind of like a Skeleton King-ish looking boss from Diablo 3. Call him Tomb Lord. He shoots a ball at you. you see what I mean? He kind of looks like the Skeleton King. Let's just whirlwind him down a little bit. Try to stay out of the circle things there. You can't see well when you stand in those circles. That's one of his attacks, I guess. He does his circling on the ground. Oh, he's in trouble now. We summon the ancients. Alright, we're gonna get him. He's almost done. <coughs> and we have beat Mercy's Reach. There we go. Simple as that. And then I'll pop back to the world map. And we're going to head to the town by the other dungeon I like. Oh, there's still a couple of skeletons left. This is the one time you got to kill a couple of jerks. So we'll head to this town. There's a blacksmith in that town. We'll get rid of the gear. And we'll rinse and repeat. Double check and make sure we didn't pick up any kind of little upgrades. Ah, no. Full arm slashing. It's not better. Nope. Nope. Strength. Slowed. No. Slow duration of movement speed, that's better, but uh, the other two stats stink. Damage, cooldown reduction. Is that what I want on an amulet? I had a list. Amulet, cooldown reduction, fury cost, movement speed, and damage. This one has damage, cooldown reduction, and healing. Huh. That might be better. Might want to imprint that. Think about what I want to imprint that with. Crit, basic, close damage. Nope. Damage reduction from close. Nope. Ground stop. Nope. Cooldown reduction. Yes. Dex barrier. No. Like the socket. Got better damage. Healing received. Dodge. Damage is slowed. Damage to close. And core skill. Okay. 
overpower damage. This one has overpower damage two, crit damage close, and lucky hit execute non-elites, two sockets. I think we keep what we got. All right, so we'll probably save this amulet. Yep, I think. We'll have to think about what we want to print on the amulet, because I don't think I have what I want to imprint the amu amulet with. I'll have to think on that. So we'll get rid of that. Let's just go do another dungeon real quick. We're at 28. We have half of our 5% bonus experience potion left. Do one dungeon. And we might pause the stream, because I think I had just done this for the boys to watch. But that's okay. And again, thing I like, I can put a little line here. Now I can just go here, and in my mini-map, the upper right corner, follow the line. Make your horse sprint. Run past some guys. Oh, it's kind of slow. I like dismounting from the horse. All right. And we're back to the first dungeon we did. You always got to be mindful, too. The Butcher, one of the bosses from Act 1 in Diablo 3, randomly spawns in dungeons. He popped into this dungeon twice. And you got to be on your toes for that fella, because he will, he will slaughter you quick. He is a hard hitter. And if you're just going along and not paying attention and not planning, watching for him. Get, get beat up really quick. I like leveling in dungeons, but he's a risk. Poison Pylon, so this will be a little mini event. We gotta kill five waves of monsters here. Set the mace to the lunging strike and the sword to the whirlwind. Even though we probably should have the sword on both because it's, it's the better, better weapon. But, hey, we did it. Mini event done. Got some loots. Pick that up. And we'll. Uh, there's more stuff this way. Let's go this way. Oops. 
was not paying attention where I was running. Okay, put that on the pylon. And we'll head down the next hallway and find the next one. Any of these people that say help, it's like a mystery or a, 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 what do you call it, a, a demon in disguise. There's always going to be a uh, elite monster out there. So just always stop if you hear that. Hey, picked up a chest. Another elite monster. Forgot to turn this up to level two. We'll go back to the main town to print this amulet. We should uh, crank it up to level two. A little bit more XP. I think you get a little bit more XP. About to level up again. There we go, level 29. Going pretty decent right now. Pretty decent. on him. And pretty much take care of everything. Alright. Gotta figure out where to put our skill point. So we have... That done. We haven't started putting points into pressure point yet. We also have the option of getting... Fury generation while berserking is better. 3% crit to stunned. That might be better. Every time you take direct damage, you get some as fortify. Probably get that, and then we'll get this uh, counter offensive next. I mean, hopefully, we'll get all of those skills, but you gotta make a choice as you're leveling. Boy. I mean, the auto pickup gold compared to the original version of Diablo 2, where it wouldn't allow you to do that. That is a, that's a smart thing. All right, second one's up. One more hallway, one more stone wheel, and we're on to a boss. There's an elite guy. Agent's out. Roll up escape. We've done the uh, or found an event in this one yet. So watch for. Just a little bit of loot. 
The other thing that's kind of nice, the crafty materials that drop, auto pick up. You don't have to click on them. So, yeah, that's just a time saver there. More elite pack. And the ancients just slaughter them. Tote our stone wheel back to the pedestal. We'll zoom in while we're doing this. And drop this off here. And we kill these two elites. The Reef took the last of the warriors out to face the flesh eaters. The rest items. of us will then we try pop to shore in up here and get this here. boss. I am loath to spill cursed blood here amidst the bones of our ancestors. All right, but here's the boss. That's Lucas. Just keep rolling around him. Watch your rage and start to low, throwing a couple of. Lunging strikes to keep my rage full and back to whirlwinding. And then pretty soon my shouts will be back up. And my agents are up. And then you should just melt the agents. Come. And he melted. Hey, we got some legendary gloves. Let's see what we got. Legendary gloves. Let's see. Five to all stats, two to rend, two ranks of upheaval. And while Call of Ancients is on your action bar, you get a 42% chance to summon the Ancients. I have a 94% chance there. So they are just, they're just garbage. That's, that's what tends to happen is you get some Legendary drop, you haven't had one for a while, you look at it, and the stats are not at all what you want, or what you need. That's just fun. So we're going to go back to Ken Bardu. I like the name of these towns. Little Ken Bardu. Alright, so we got to drop some stuff off at Blacksmith. See if we got any upgrades on the yellow items. So much. Yep. Alright, so crit damage, strength, overpower. Alright. The overpower I don't need. Damage to con crowd control would be useful. Strength is useful, but it is not better than what I got. Strength. Nope. Crit. Nope, not, that's a two hander. Max Fury. No, I'm really looking for crit and crit damage on rings. Alright. All stats, movement, speed, and dex. Well, honestly, that's better than the boots I'm wearing right now, so we're going to wear those. Overpower, crit strike damage, damage to slowed, and damage over... 6% damage over time, who cares? Uh, crit damage and slowed is useful. Overpower. Uh, is a little bit more damage. I'd have to re-imprint. Only get one socket. I don't think it's... I don't think it's a big enough upgrade to mess with right now. Rare Sword. Crit strike, yes. Core damage, yes. Crit strike damage, yes. And all stats. Well, that's not bad. Is that better than uh, close core damage slowed? I'll, uh, is that better than healthy enemies? Core goes down a little bit. Crit strike damage. Again, it's just because I'm just using this for the stats, so I don't think it's a huge boost. It's not worth the uh, 
Not worth switching it out, honestly, I don't think. And production from shrine movement speed. Shrine, slow, move armor. No. Cooldown reduction I want. Max fury is not bad. Healing received, who cares? And that is not more damage. And this one I already said is really not better than what I've got. Ranks of rend and upheaval, I'm never going to use attack speeds, worthless. Alright, so we're going to salvage all items. And we'll salvage that. Alright, and then we're going to go over to the imprinter and see what we can imprint on that amulet. We'll store the other amulet. And I think this will probably be where I'll end the stream for today. Amulet. My class only. Armor. Elite gives you a barrier. We already got that. Damage reduction for bleeding. We already have. That we got. Crit for, yeah, we already got that. Whenever you deal direct. I think we have, yeah, we already have that. Basic, we don't have that. Okay. Distant enemies have an 8% chance to be stunned for 2 seconds when they hit you. You deal 20% increased damage to stunned enemies. Okay. Lucky hit. Damage an enemy with a core skill has a 22% chance to extend duration of berserking by 1 second. Double... Did I put that on something already? Yeah, I already did that. And I have nothing there. Alright, so we'll probably end up putting this. Because I don't think I have that basic skill on any of my pieces yet. And it's not exactly what I want on an amulet, but... Might as well, it gives us something. Alright, a little bit of bonus. Is there anything on the boots I really want to put on right now? Already have that. Oh, I should shoot my class only. And I already have that, so... Not worth imprinting the boots, because I don't have anything to really imprint them with. Alright, this is where I'll end the stream. Hopefully next time... You Steve Rogers 10.0 will still be alive. That's the hope. Thanks for watching.